Well, as someone who suffers from seasonal allergies, I always look at that allergy forecast, right? This fall was predicted to be one of the worst in some time, mainly because we've been seeing these warmer temps and well, it's October. So what can we do? Dr. Roger Friedman from Ohio ENT and Allergy Physicians is the man who has the answers, right? Hopefully, hopefully so. All of them, Dr. <laughs> Friedman. Okay, so it is the beginning of October and you kind of think that are we going to be done with allergy season at some point because it's going to start to get cooler, but we're kind of still in it right now. We're, we are, Robin. We're, we're still in ragweed season, in fact. We're, you know, ragweed starts in mid-August, and it goes until it frosts a few times. Okay. So we've had beautiful weather, and so ragweed pollen counts are still pretty high right now. So a lot of our patients are still suffering from ragweed. In addition, this is the start of the mold season. As the leaves start coming down, as we get a bit more rain and dampness, molds are particularly bad in the fall. And why is that such a big issue, mold? Mold is bad for a couple of reasons. Number one reason is that it causes a lot of rhinosinusitis. We get into a lot of problems with not only allergy symptoms, but sinus disease. It, it's in fact one of the reasons why at Ohio ENT we merged our allergists with the, with the ENT docs to help treat sinus disease. We both treat parts of it, and uh, this is a really important time for that. In addition, this is when asthma is bad. Asthma right. starts really flaring in the fall. And the reason for that is that mold spores are very tiny. They can get into the lungs and cause way more asthma, where some of our other pollens, like trees and grasses, cause more nose and eye symptoms. Molds cause a lot of asthma, and that's a really bad problem this time of year. Just thinking about people out there who may be dealing with all these, are there things we can do around the house, something we can do to try to help? There, there are some things we can do. I mean, keeping the windows closed, although, you know, who doesn't want to keep the windows open in a beautiful fall day? Right. But keeping the windows closed can keep some of the outdoor stuff out, the ragweed out, the outdoor molds out. That can be helpful. A dehumidifier in the basement is really helpful for mold allergies, keeping things less, less moldy and less damp. And then using air purifiers can be helpful, too, in, in patients' bedrooms. Let's talk a little bit about some of the other allergies kind of going on right now. Kids are back to school. Food allergies, first and foremost, are a big thing. I know a lot of schools don't even let you pack peanut butter and jelly anymore yeah, the, because yeah, the, of that fear. This, this is a big time. And, you know, as we're getting close in three weeks from now, Halloween, that's one of the most dangerous days of the year for our kids with food allergies right. because we've got to be very careful when they go out trick-or-treating and, again, at schools getting food and stuff like that. And so it's a, a very important time to have great awareness of food allergies that are going on uh, right now. And in the last couple of years, and I've heard about this, and you guys obviously are aware, we want to talk about this teal pumpkin project they have going on. I can even show you. Right. Because we've got our little little bag that nifty we give bags. out, our nifty bags yeah. for our teal pumpkin. The, the teal pumpkin project is a great idea because what it is is it means there are houses that are safe when kids go out trick-or-treating that won't give out allergenic food. Right. They know that kids are allergic to nuts, whether it be peanuts or tree nuts, and so they're going to give out I'm going to always say, use the word healthy food, but they're going to give out food that is non-allergenic. And that's so safe, so important for the families to know that, that if they have a teal pumpkin, that they're aware of the food allergies and they're not going to give foods that may be dangerous. Especially when kids are that young, I feel like they're going to be going house to house and in between grabbing something well, that, that you want. Yeah, right, and right, and right. that's an important point. And we work real hard with our families, and our families know this too, And that the kids, again, we tell them, go out trick-or-treating, get what you want, but don't eat anything. Bring it home. <laughs> bring it home let and mom and dad it. look through it. And, you know, I've always told them, you know, bring all their peanut nut allergy, you know, food. Bring them to their allergist. Let us let us have them. <laughs> they, can't, they can't eat them. I don't know if they could see this side of Dr. Friedman's face, but he <laughs> winked at me like four times like, I get lots of candy this month, so it's a <laughs> great thing. I wish it was. They never remember to do that. <laughs> But these are very important things, and one of the things I just want to briefly mention, the EpiPen has been in the news. A lot of people carry that around, right, because yep. if they have some kind of reaction because of the cost. Yeah, they're, they're, that's obviously exploded in this world suddenly. Yeah. The EpiPen is a great device. It's a life-saving device. It's a critically important device, and right now it's the only device on the market. So it is very important. Obviously, there's been uh, issues about cost. and right. and. I'll give some credit to the, the company that they've lowered the price. They've, they, they haven't lowered the price, but they've given coupons to cut the price in half. They're also coming out with a generic that will be half price, what, what they've been charging. The price has been too high. We all agree with that. They've sure. raised it way too high. And part of the reason is there's been no competition. In the near future, we're hoping the FDA is going to approve some new products. But again, they have to be as good as the EpiPen. And right. that's, the EpiPen is, a, you know, it works every time. And that's so, so critically important. And it's still so important for kids to have their EpiPen. And if, they, if the price is a big issue, there are 
ways to try to get around that and at least try to get EpiPens at an affordable price. Okay, and the best way to do it, obviously, ask your allergist, right? Yeah, I there think you're going to have to do that. All right, Dr. Friedman, thanks so much for being with us.